Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Whenever a horse is put to a carriage, plow, wagon, or other vehicle or farm implement, the horsepower is literally harnessed by a collection of leather straps and iron hardware that together make up what is called a harness. The horse pushes the load either through the application of a chest or neck collar that is then connected to the vehicle or implement being pulled. Harnesses come in all types. They can vary from region to region, between animal types, and depending on their uses. For example, a fine show harness is ornamented with patent leather, plenty of chrome bling to catch the eye during a parade or performance class. A farm harness is typically less flamboyant, but might sport a few stainless steel or brass spots. A pulling harness is highly reinforced to handle the extreme stresses applied when the powerful horses lean into their loads. Over the years, harnesses have changed as new materials have been developed, including plastics and biothane webbing. But many harness makers and their customers still prefer traditional leather harnesses. Today we visit Sampson Harness Shop in far northern Minnesota, where Bernie Sampson has been making harnesses for most of his life. This back is uh, approximately 26 inches long. The belly has been removed, blacked on both sides at the tannery. What you want to see in a good hide. You see these lines on the back right, here? Right, right, these are right. vein marks. Okay. If the vein marks are gone, then you might get. Okay, here's a piece that's been leveled. Sure. I have this leveled okay. here. Yep, what you yep. see up here, you're going to see vein marks, but here was. You can see it's all machined. This, this has gone through one of our okay. splitters here to bring these down to a more uniform. And this is going to be a double line piece, so it's not going to make any difference. Once you cut, you want to. Uh, you know, you, once, once you split it down, you want to... Uh, Get something on that other uh, side? Usually you do. Uh -huh. Not always, but usually you do, depending on... But in this particular case, with these breast collars, these get double, double lined with a light layer of leather just to get that little grain side comfort against the horse. And you have black and brown because... Black, brown, black, and russet. Brown, okay. This is russet. And so this hasn't been dyed that so much? That has not... That, that's not been dyed at all. Uh, that's been treated okay. and, 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 and curry, they call it. You know, it's been oil and all. And, and then this would be uh, there's your okay. There's the difference. Here's, here's your black, your brown, and your russet. Okay. So you get a big piece of leather if you're, for example, if you're going to make a new harness. Yeah. You would, you take a big piece out and you just start cutting up. Well, I can show you here quickly on this side. It's going to have to be straightened anyway. I'm going to move that out of the way until I get this. You want to pick a fairly, you want to stay right down the spine of the animal. As close to the spine you want. The strength is, this is the back. The strength is from here down to the high belly. The, uh, that's at your strength. How do you know that that's the spine? How do I know that's spine? That is a spine because that's the center of the back, the center of the side. How do I know that? Yeah. Well, as you look at a hide, if I, if I lay the side out here, like those browns, it would be much wider. Okay. It would be up to 37 inches wide. Okay. The bottom of the hide, you'd see back here, you'd see the hind leg. Okay. You'd see the, up here, you'd see the front right. leg. You'd see the effects of the belly of the hide. You'd see these 
uh, wrinkles and whatnot that are down in the belly. Here we have the butt. This was, the tail has been cut off, but sometime you'll get them in with just a stub of the tail. Here's the pate, or the head is up here. And here's a, sh now here's the shoulder. See these marks right here, these wrinkles right here? Yeah. That's, that's the shoulder. Okay. Uh, we take lines, uh, lines and traces off the back. Okay. Any strength strap comes from up here. Okay. As you move down, you, if you're using a strap that's going to be a, like on a, on a back, on a back pad that's going to be the layer at the center, then you can, you can take uh, those straps from lower down. You can take billet straps for, that are, that are just support straps. Right, right. But if you're looking right. for a, uh, so a like strength a strap, strap, you would want a to hame strap here. comes from somewhere up in this area. Because it has to be strong. It has to be strong. This piece right here is going to be a trim. I'm going to get, I'm going to get a trim out of here. And if you cut enough hides, and when you're cutting a harness, you're cutting more than enough hides. Uh, you're cutting at least three for a work harness. And, uh, and at least one of them is going to be, a, uh, be this extra heavy, where you're going to use for breast straps and if it's single ply belly band billets or any strength straps are going to come off of this. As you go down the line, uh, you're going to be cutting into uh, you're going to be cutting other hides, and, and the butt is usually pretty much similar. One hide would maybe make, uh, uh, like this one here now. See, now we got that straightened out. Well, I can get one or two hame straps out of this best end right here. I cut another hide, I can get one or two hame straps. I got my hame straps for a set of harness. So this is the trim piece taken off of there. Now this piece would appear, would, you could appear to be waste. This is 3 eighths. I could have made this half inch. It would have made really good loops. I would have still straightened it out. That would all turn that on into, into uh, slide, you know, slide keepers or slide loops. These pieces, as you can see how many I have stacked up here, and oftentimes there's a huge stack here. These are all the hides that have been strips cut off of all the different hides, and these are used mostly for fillers in round leather. See, here's a piece of material that looks like it, it wouldn't make much of anything. It's just a cutoff. Right, 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 right. Well, we just come around with this here and now it's a buckle safe. There it is. Here's a, a box, up tug, box loop up tug. Uh -huh. Well, this, this particular one works well. Making this, it's got a pad, it's got a uh, a, a safe on the back side. Some of our clamps that we use. This this clamp right here is designed so if I have a have to put something like this in it, I can just run this in, and my plates drop on either side of that, and I can pass. This is there's uh, nearly what oh, sure. six inches of clearance yeah, here, so I can I can drop a a pretty wide piece in here, five and three quarter inches wide, and still press the top and press the sides because we've got a design for that purpose. We had this one specially made, a lot of stuff made. This little hydraulic press works good for that, oh, for this design, one. Design. Puts the design in there and then this would be, well this one would be done over there, but that, you get down pressure, you get side pressure and everything is done all in one pass. You know, you could hammer out a blind, but there's a Randall uh, 201 blind mold yep. and we cut our 22 gauge sheet metal, we sew the leather together, uh, drop it in here, drop it in here. It allows you to be efficient and, and consistent and precise. Right, right. And you know, and then when you look at the, at, the, at the industry we're referring to, I mean, here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different blind molds. And that's, and then there are variations of these molds. Here's another one. Here's the cutter that goes with it. And here's the mold that's under there for the number five. Here's uh, uh, one square for uh, square for driving harness or for, uh, for smaller bridles. There's a draft squares over here. Here's the uh, one we use very little, but uh, <laughs> it's the biggest one I've ever seen of this very same 
I'm more. <laughs> Here's a comparison of those. And then one of the smallest ones is down here. Uh -huh. the right. So this is, we don't use this. I got a quicker for it. I got a cutter for it. But <laughs> I, I, I might have made one bridle in, in, in 30 years with this blind. It's big. I mean, you know. Right. <laughs> it's truly big. <laughs> so somebody, somebody said, we want a big blind. Well, there it is. We'll make you a big blind. We start with a strap that's plain at the top. Pick a, this particular one goes half inch through inch and three quarter double line or half inch through inch and a half single line and then the uh, inch and three quarter roller that goes on the extension shaft is down there for single line. So it'll do half inch to inch and three quarter. Uh, and here's a five ace. And that puts down that pair of line. It's got the double line. I've got capacity in here for 11 at one time of croupers. These are Randall crouper molds. They take two at a time. This one here is a nice little one. I don't even know where it came from, but it's sure a nice one. This makes really nice pony croupers. And what are they stuffed with? These are stuffed with flaxseed. We use a few other seeds. Uh, you can really, a fella told me here not that long ago to try using some... Uh, uh, Timothy seed, it's fine. You get to go through a fine tube because you got different tubes. There's our Krupper stuffer okay. sitting right over there, and then there's a series of, of Krupper molds sitting that hold six at a time. This is a stuffer. The seed is put in here. Here you got the tube uh, that you put, uh, like stuffing a sausage. There are different tubes for different size Krupers. The, uh, the Krupper starts, uh, this style starts with a pattern cut off the clicker. Here's your pattern. Then that is sewn into a shape like this. And then it's, it's basically the sausage casing. There's the sausage casing. It's stuffed, shoved up on here. Uh, the machine pounds the seed into the crouper and it comes out as uh, stuffed like this. Then it's put into one of the different formers. Here's a six um, Krupper former. When, when these are, uh, when they come off of here, they go into a water bath. Okay. And they're put in water to lubricate, to soften, and to allow them to be more flexible. Then they're put on here and uh, drawn down. And the longer they're on there, the tighter they dry. Sure. This is actually a folding machine. This is a folding machine. If you're going to make, uh, I make a lot of what's termed folded, like on this harness here, this has a, a, a rolled or folded breaching band in it. And you feel the edge of it, it's rounded. And, right, right, right. And right. as compared to this breaching band right here, which is just a one piece of flat stock and right, another exactly. piece sewed over the top. Right, right. This one has much more of an edge to it. Yeah. But this one, this one is um, nicer to the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. comfortable. Right, right, right. Yeah. It, it's, uh, and that is made, that, that this fold is made on this machine. Okay. This will take uh, a wider piece. Oh, five and a half inch or five and three quarter inch or different widths and it takes and it quickly folds those two together. Okay. Then there's another machine that puts that dip in here that allows this layer to almost sit down lower Inside in of the channel rather than almost. way up on top. Uh -huh. There's another machine, huh. another set of rollers that go on that. Huh. The piece that's folded together, yep. then inside that there's a leather filler. Okay. Like you were thin, showing me. That splits those. in that what, leather filler, but mm -hmm. they come, you see them stacked up on lines, yep, right. splitting machines. That goes in here, uh, that uh, is tacked up on the end, it's gone back through another roller that puts, and it puts this turn up, uh -huh. uh, this upturn on here. Then this layer is run through, uh, through a creaser over there that puts this bevel on there right then right. then that's those strips are stripped down to the right thickness that are 
laid in here. So you got one, two, three, four pieces of leather in that breaching band. You got spotting machines. All there's uh, for setting the studs or the spots in harnesses. There are four automatics here. Four of the automatic standard rivet spotting machines and a whole series of hand feed foot machines that you just have, you have to feed the spot in. When, depending on the shape of the spot you're setting, if there's some of these odd spots don't feed well through a uh, automatic, you almost have to hand set them. But everything that we can set automatically, we have spot setters for them. And I have the machine, again, efficiency, when you're an operator like I'm doing, uh, efficiency is the key to the whole thing. So rather than changing uh, tooling on a machine, right, right, I right. just have a machine that does, each one is set up to do its own job and sure. I never have to worry with fooling sure. with that. And so you are putting in stainless steel? The stainless steel or brass, 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 stainless steel, chrome and brass. Uh -huh. yeah. And those, that's strictly decorative? That's strictly decorative, yeah, 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 yeah. This, the awl is going to come down from the top. It's going to poke a hole. The needle is going to come up from the bottom. It's got a hook on it, and it's going to grab the thread. When you watch in here, the shuttle point is going to come around, and it's going to, in effect, miss or not catch every other pass. And this is an old, when you look at this machine, I, I'm amazed at the engineering in a machine right. like this. It's because yeah. it, 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 this is an old machine. It's an old pattern. It's a new machine, but this was developed. The precision. This, this machine was developed about 1913. So you watch that. Yeah. All comes down, needle comes up. All goes down, needle comes up. You can't sew synthetic on this because that hook would grab. You can go in a straight well, line, but you can't cross. Right. You, right. Can, you can, you can, you uh, can. I've got three plies under here, but this will handle four without any difficulty. Wow. We're set up at lowest clearance on this machine, and it'll do. It's supposed to be maxed out about 800 stitches a minute, but I never run it over 250 or 300. <laughs> This one is set up to sew everything. Well, usually it's, it's all, this, this machine sews traces. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. This is the round breaker for making round reins, for breaking the round reins. I just broke that over. No. And it's called breaking because it's, it's putting in a permanent bend. It's in there. putting a permanent bend in there. Now we're going to go to this machine right here. This is just a really cursory example of how this is done. Usually we like to prep the leather for, you know, several, for quite a while before I break it. Now this is going to, now this is going through, this is going to be sewed. We got a guide on either side. I got the filler strap through the center here. This one off a shade.
so now that now we went from uh, from the flat to this. Now, now the next step is put into a pre-rounder. Well, we got several of these, but this one here is for this size, and put, it, it, it really put a nice accent on the back side of this. Yes. Then you go to the. So then uh, we we select one of the round uh, of the rounding edges which is, happens to be this one we're going to use here. And this one will take the corners off of this, because we had the corner, the strap was, cleans, off the excess. cleans it off and brings it down to the stitch line. Yeah. Go to the blacking department. <laughs> Run it through a dyer like that. Just dye the edges. Wipe off some of the excess. Apply some gum tragicanth. So now we come to the finisher roller. And this, as you can see, there's a series of holes in here for all different size rounds. And we just draw that back and forth. We we'll hear a time or two. Completely transformed that piece. I love it. That's amazing. That. Yeah, you can hardly see this. There is no seam. Uh, no, that that no, machine. When we put the channelers on there, you it's it's there is no stitch. You don't see it. It varies everything. Right. Yeah. But. Uh, cool. Yeah, it would just it would just bury it completely. It completely transformed that piece. I love it. That's amazing. That. Yeah, you can hardly see this. There is no seam. Uh, no, that that yeah, machine. It's, it's when we like put the channelers on there, you it's it's there is no stitch. You don't see it. It varies everything. Right. Yeah. But. Uh, cool. Yeah, it would just it would just bury it completely. Very nice. And that's how. <laughs> one fella. Making harness, he was out from Montana, and he was here one time over years ago. And I said, "Well, it's not too hard to make those." He said, "I try and try, and I can't get it done." I said, "Well, are you following the right procedure?" I said, "I'll show you." So I showed him. Oh, that looks so easy. And I asked him after it's how it didn't work out like that for me. He said, I, <laughs> "You know something I don't know." I said, "You watched me do it right from beginning to yeah, end." Yeah, but you've done yeah. it so many times. You know exactly what you're doing every I've, step. You make it look awful easy. I made literally thousands. Oh yeah, without a right. doubt. Right. You know. And somebody asked me one time, they said, Why don't you buy those? And I said, Well, why don't I buy everything? Then I could put then I'd be an assembler. Right, exactly. And I'm not. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.